Well, praise the Lord. How are you doing, beloved? We we broke through that apathy and um, the lie of the enemy that um, you know our prayers don't matter, our standing doesn't matter. Um, the speaking of life that we do, the caring of the God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere we go, it doesn't quite matter. Look, there are too many people out there. What can you do? We broke through that lie. It does matter. Absolutely. It is significant. But we'll move now and we'll look more on Nehemiah. It's... Um, I hope you're gonna get to love um, the book. Maybe you can read it. Then it's it's not huge. <laughs> it's gonna take you maybe I don't know half an hour to read through the book. Nehemiah has the right heart and was in the right place for God to use him. Both things extremely important. To be to have the right heart and be in the right place you can be in the right place the wrong heart you're not sensitive enough okay because the, the heart can deceive you you can have the right heart but because of other things that kind of uh, slow you down and keep you away you cannot be in the right place or you don't know you are in the right place so both things are very important for the fusion of the power right heart right place here's Nehemiah and what happened in the month of Nisan uh, chapter 2 verse 1 in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, um, he was um, Babylon and I think Persians, the Persian Empire, they conquered um, Babylon. So he was one of those kings, huge empire, big. Uh, when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in his presence before <laughs> wow I had not been said in his presence before so such an such an interesting um, remark so the way he presented his countenance before the king was a setup from the Lord <laughs> you know, when favor comes to you, things that draw attention to the higher ups and people around um, are it could be the extreme joy, could be the peace, could be the grace on you, could be the way you walk, the way you talk and smile. Um, in his case, was sadness. Even that was a setup. So he gets noticed by the big king. <laughs> and it's it, it, the king starts conversation. What's going on with you? You know, and then Nehemiah explains what's going on. So in verse 6, the king with the queen sitting beside him asked me, How long will your journey take and when will you get back wow right there favor worked straight right there for him it pleased the king to send me so I set the time I also said to him if he pleases the king may I have letters to the governors of trans Euphrates so that they will provide me safe conduct until I arrive in Judah. See, favor always works with wisdom, understanding. Okay, it's not just favor that 
you know, people spoil you now and they give you everything you desire because you won't know what to do with everything unless wisdom is there to show you the path ahead. So he knew exactly what to ask the king, right? Remember Esther with another huge king? <laughs> and... Um, the the king she she goes there breaks the rule goes to the king and um, so um, it asks for you know the king to come um, to something some some party that she she set up you know and um, then it wants to come again and that night invites him again the next day and that i hope i have the story correct <laughs> in between the first invitation and the second one that night is when god intervenes and shows him about mordecai and then haman gets revealed but there was, there was interesting, Esther didn't jump to say, hey, uh, Haman is doing this to you. She waited that God continues to set up the whole thing and knew how to set it up, how worked with wisdom how to set it up. Because she was waiting for God to have the initiative. You know, favor doesn't mean that right now you decide everything and you say, no, favor means you are in a position to get the ear of the person that needs to listen or write the check. But wisdom teaches you how to set up the whole thing. Okay, read Esther and you'll see how all this setup is important, right? Same here, right? Favor was there, but wisdom also showed him how to ask and what to do. Right? And this is this is so important, okay? Um, so Nehemiah was the cupbearer, <laughs> the biggest king on earth, probably, in that time, comes to him or asks him what can I do for you? How can I help you? The cupbearer? The king? <laughs> so, um, I, I love that. Because there's no degrees. When the favor of God comes, He absolutely opens it up to the highest king or highest person in the hierarchy okay because our father is way above all of this amen all about so favor also so on one point favor works with wisdom as it teaches you how what to ask how to walk in this path Right to to achieve what the Lord plans for you, so wisdom and knowledge are walking with you. Okay. Um, at the same time, when favor comes, it arises enemies. The enemies notice that favor. You know, when light is shining and this fear of light is walking in the darkness, you think darkness doesn't notice it? Mm hmm. So what happened is the enemies of Israel, the enemies of the Lord, notice that. So you are ready. You are ready. When you walk in a favor, you are ready because the enemies are going to notice and are going to start trying to stop you. Okay. Verse 10, when Sambalat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite, official uh, Ammonite official heard about this they were very much disturbed that someone had come to promote the welfare 
of the Israelites. Wow. Yes, I love the body of Christ. The body of Christ, it's, it's getting awakened. The identity of who they are in the righteousness of God. The body of Christ is getting awakened. We care. We, yes, we want to help the Israelites. But the enemy, it's coming against. Now, who are these? So I'm just going to give you a little bit of uh, the way I studied these names. Okay, so Sambalat. The translation of the name. And you can get like um, um, any kind of a strong concordance. Or I'm using the uh, BLB, the Blue Letter Bible. And it has this original and strong numbers in there. So you can see what they mean. It means, uh, Sambalat means strength of the caves, the dark hidden places, the strength of darkness. And he is a Moabite. Interesting. Tobiah, which says it, his name, it's a good translation. It says Jehovah is good, but he's an Ammonite. Now, Moab and Ammon, they are the two sons of Lot. Do you know? Do you remember the story? Yeah, you know, Lot got drunk and his daughters slept with him and gave birth to these two sons. And they, they were like under curse. And um, there is a place, and I can find it for you, you can find it, where it says the Moabite and the Ammonite will not get into the house of the Lord. Right. So, um, they are, they represent connections with the Jews, with the Israel, but not from Abraham and Isaac. I always think about the Moabites and the Ammonites when I read John 1.12 that you know very well as many as received him to them gave him the right to become sons of God to those who believe in his name but listen to verse 13 who were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man, but of God. I believe the Moabites are the ones born of the will of the flesh. And the Ammonites, they are once born of the will of man. And that's not you. That's not us. We are born of God. So who comes against the favor of the Lord and against Nehemiah going to help the people of God, the ones born of God, the ones that are not born of God, born of the will of the flesh, born of the will of man. Interesting, they seem to be related to Christians. They have things in common, but they are not of God. Okay? And that can be ideas, that can be initiatives, that can be ministries, that can be teachings that sound like, <laughs> sound like born of God, but they are not. Um, so, it, it gets more interesting, isn't it? Okay, we'll, we'll go more and we'll understand more. I love that I, I got your connection right there. I, I feel that. So we'll, we'll go more to that.